Epi Shades on. This is the coolest episode I've ever had of In Touch. I had to make sure I even got some Chinese tech, you know, just so I look right, like I look futuristic. Ladies and gentlemen, what a time to be alive on this beautiful day. Um, we're going to talk about a subject that I've always needed experts in the field who can guide us and tell us actually, do we have a big future in e-gaming in South Africa? And if so, how do we start hosting these world expos? Everybody's now at home. Um, you get to connect with people you don't know across the world and end up in a combat with someone you've never seen. But having people like Sam Wright, who's my guest today, um, the number one tech girl who's going to tell about her, t talk to us about her journey, um, what got her into the sport, and what's the future of e-gaming in SA. But also looking at ladies, right? Like you'll expect me to be sitting with um, someone uh, who has probably, because of the stigma, e-gaming is a white male dominated industry. But here I am sitting with Sam Wright, we're gonna talk about um, you know, the, the, the highs and the lows, the challenges, the risks, the opportunities, the entire journey. And right here is my daily bread. I call it my daily bread because I'm about to whip him in FIFA 2021. So I've been given this daily bread today, Tabam, from the East Rand, Ekuruleni. Um, where in Ekuruleni? Uh, springs. Okay. Guatema. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. Mm, that's what guys will say, Springs. No, you're from the hood, Guatema. One time. All right? One time. That's One right. Time. So let's start, man. We're going to start our game and it's going to be interactive because I expect you, if you have um, any questions, you can post later. Um, Sam is not going to be the last time you see her here. So we'll be doing some, possibly from this conversation, we're going to have the next gaming expo. Why not? Is that possible? I think it's possible. We should definitely do that. Let's plan it now. Fantastic. Oh, but please. hold on, Sam. I did say this. I, I was shocked when I read your bio. I was like, hold on. A lady, you started early. How? And what got you into e-gaming? So for me, I've played video games since I was a kid. So my brother played and my dad played. And I used to just jump in and play as well. That was kind of my vibe. Um, okay. And I used to watch them. Because also, I always find it weird when you're younger. And I do think it's a woman thing and maybe a girl thing. Where like, my brother and my dad would always be like, no, you can't play. You're not as good as us. So I watched a lot and learned to analyze games and things like that. But then. From the age of like five or six, we were just always playing games. Hold on a second. That's primary school. In fact, that's grade one. You were already playing games. We were already playing games. And not just any game. I'm sure you were playing violent games. We were playing violent games. So my dad, because he was a gamer, he had Mortal Kombat. He had Age of Empires, which isn't so violent. It's about building like empires. And then he played Command and Conquer. I remember that. Ooh. So what happened to Command and Conquer? It's still around. Apparently you can play it on mobile, but I haven't jumped back in. But Command and Conquer, Red Alert, that was the game Man. he used to jam. And then we played Mortal Kombat, which looking back, I don't think small children should be playing Mortal Kombat. At all. It's too much of a very gory game. It's but, too much. But, 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 but I'm going to talk about the, the, the actual age uh, restrictions around games, which we don't apply. It's not existent. Mm. But what I'm interested in, um, Sam, as, as, a, as, as a gaming community in SA, we are not pro athletic or sports games. We're strong with violence and we're struggling with GBV in this country. Um, from your experience as South Africans, why are we so pro violent games? So I don't know if it's so much that we're, we're pro the violent games. I think fighting games yeah. are the, e the most easily accessible. So if you think about it, we were always playing games like when, if you wanted to play video games, not all of us had PCs and consoles, so you would go to like the shop down the road and there'd be an arcade system there and you could put your extra cash in, you know, you'd lie to your mom and say you didn't get changed so you could jam some games. And those were all fighting games okay. on those on, on those arcade systems. So I think that was where fighting games gotcha. became popular in South Africa. And then obviously FIFA, FIFA is the most sold game in South Africa every year. So FIFA is the most popular, but then the second is always the fighting games. And I really think it's because it was just that community aspect we could go, we could play at the arcade. Right. That's why it's, they became popular. Is, is the arcade community still in, in existence? So not so much anymore. I was actually trying to look for like, remember like the good old magic company vibes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. those slips for prizes you just no. wanted to play games with your friends 100%. i can't find them anymore and i think it's they're like they're like those uh, vhs 
or DVD, higher in stores. You, like, you, really, you, really don't, you don't find those blockbusters anymore, like those video mm-hmm. towns. And yeah. I think it's because everyone has consoles, but I do think that we're missing a gap here because as much as we say everyone has consoles, they're right. really expensive to get your hands on. Games are expensive. Mm-hmm. And, and you'll see like there's a popularity in mobile games, okay. but I think that's because there are, there are young gamers in South Africa who mm-hmm. desperately want to play video games, right. and they don't have that arcade system anymore. And we, we sort of, I don't think we cater to them, and it, it bugs me a little bit. I wish we still had those community places where we could go and we could all play games together. So does she tech movement apply to males or boys as well? I think so. Okay. Tell me more about the she tech movement. So I think for when you say she tech movement. The, like, you know, part of your description of, you know, you okay. always put Sam right she tech. So for me it's about I just want to get more girls feeling comfortable talking about tech because I knew when I was growing up a lot of men and boys like I said would be like oh you can't play these are video games they right. actually met someone once a very famous sportsman who went oh we're talking about video games you won't understand and I was like this is the industry I work in man like and I, I kind of wanted to move forward where women felt that it was okay to talk mm-hmm. about these things they love because a lot of women don't talk about how they play games they don't talk about their love for like everything geek because it's kind of like there's this weird look that you get. So I kind of wanted that, but I also wanted men to be a bit more accepting. I don't want some girls to sit there and have a guy say, oh, this is a boy's thing. Like, there shouldn't be a boy-girl thing. We should be able to do whatever we want. So what game, what's what's that game you recommend that you think ladies will likely, you know, fall in love with or probably be as religious like you are? You know, looking at the likes of, um, what's this number one game that everybody has now? And every parent is not aware of the amount of violence in it. Uh, Fortnite. 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 Fortnite, right? Um, Fortnite has some skins. Of, you, you can buy like these well female Avenger type of looking. Like, I've seen they've invested a lot in a lot of female characters. Do you think the idea behind it was to draw a lot of female? Uh, engagement on the game? I think so because I played games from when I was young and yeah. you didn't get to play as if you were a girl there wasn't a female character that you could play. Mortal Kombat for me was cool because there were female characters. But they only had four. But they had four. Yeah. At least it was four. That right. for me. Or you could play Tomb Raider but for the most part you were always playing as men. True. So I think that you've seen like games like Fortnite have introduced more and more female characters female skins just because at the end of the day it's not only about gender it's also about skin color and things you want to see yourself in the game you want to see yourself represented right so i do think that that makes it easier for for women when they jump in but also from a playing games point of view Uh i think for any young girl or woman who wants to start my suggestion is always stay away from online multiplayers to begin with (laughs) Can you because people online are not great, so start with something fun where you're not communicating with other people, and then once you're a bit more confident, jump in online and, and deal with the strangers. Yeah, because say uh, online people, they, are they can be bullies. They, yeah. yeah, but Taban, I want to know about your experience. Can you make a living as a gamer? Yes, you can, 100%. What is it? What, 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 I mean, do you get endorsement? Do you get a salary? Look, um, first things first, this is one thing that I always preach to the kids in the organization that I run in Crowd Control. Right. And I tell them that, look guys, not everybody will become esports athletes. Okay. However, there are a vast number of opportunities that are made available to you Fantastic. to be able to make a profitable career within esports. I mean, you find videographers that are profiling um, various uh, gaming organizations to you know um, esports casters such as you know Sam right for example right. um you can even host your own uh, streaming streaming channel where you do your own reviews of games and stuff like that so there's a whole pool of opportunities that are waiting out there for a lot of people to jump into especially um, kids at a very young age because at that time you must remember that kids from a very young age their minds are very their minds are very free flowing and Look, at that time it gives them the ability to learn things much more quicker as opposed to someone like me, my age. Let's talk about um, something that I expect Sam to be in the league of. The biggest YouTube channel in gaming is Logo. I don't know if you guys follow. I've seen some of it. Yeah. You've seen some of it? He hits on reviews 8 million views in a week. More than a new Drake song. Stop cheating man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> But, but, I would like, okay. but I would like you to take me through this, Sam, right? Because what's very critical for me is I'm at home. I'm realizing that there's this big boom in 
having your own YouTube channel or having your own following or your own community, how do I build my own community um, as, a re as somebody who reviews games? Because overseas they're doing it so well and we don't have local, like those locally doing it. I know you did it on Y, you did some in uh, 5FM and I wanted to understand the engagement. Is there reciprocity? Are people as equally excited? And can we start seeing a new dispensation of game reviewers who are not just, you know, heard off on radio, but they are actually making it, killing in their career? So I do think we have the opportunity in South Africa to do this. This is something I feel really strongly about though. When you go watch those international channels and you see all those people, I think that the problem, mm -hmm. and I don't know, if it's just a South African gaming mentality, right. but people go and they watch that and then they just try to copy it. Yeah. And I feel like we've lost the fact that there's like, South Africa has such a unique flavor. Okay. Like we should just be ourselves. And I do think if we could get people- How do we do it though? How do we, how do we authenticate, how do we give it our own independent identity? When you say we should be ourselves, how do we do it? Because the guys overseas, they invest in the green screen, right? They'll invest in the right cameras. And when they do the review while they play, it's so interactive. And I say, but I know somebody better. Taban can do better than that guy, but Taban is not doing it. How do we, do we lack in maybe the commentary side? Because some of them are professional commentators. Mm. So from a commentating side, obviously, and I think this, this pertains to YouTube as well. Right. Remember, at the end of the day, if you're in front of a camera, you have to be an entertainer. Yes. And I don't think that we have the, the means to, I don't want to say train people up, but give them the skills that you need, because there's certain skills that are universal when you're in front of a camera from a right. broadcast perspective. I'd love to see more South Africans get those opportunities to learn those skills. Did you okay. just score? I just scored, yes. Yes, yeah. well done. Yeah, and I'm listening, yeah, yeah. But outside, oops, oh, oh, so you didn't score. Oh. Oh, awkward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that there's that, and I also just think that it's it's a matter of, to be fair, is the cost of it, because you mentioned the green screens and things. True. So to do a review of a game, what a lot of people don't realize is you need the console with the game, then you need another PC capturing all of that content. Mm. You need a, a PC that's capable of editing not only the stuff that you're filming, but also the game. Those PCs cost a lot of money yeah. because they need all sorts of high-tech software. If you've got a green screen, you need all the lights. And I just feel like on top of all of that, you need the internet connection. True. You need all of that. And it, it's hard because so, for most of us, we've got a day job. I mean, obviously I do this for a living. So when I say that, it sounds unfair. But when I started, <laughs> yeah. I had a day job. So if I needed to do this, it had to happen at nights on weekends. It's tough. What would be a startup cost? Let's, let's, cause, cause I, I, I'm, I'm looking at, um, I grew up in an era where everybody who I went to college with, in their bedroom had a music studio because we all thought we could be rappers and we invested in the right equipment you know i think when the will is there and the intention is there we make means we know how to make it happen mm. and i can tell you easy a setup of a studio in your bedroom will cost you 45k for a good studio but it's going to be 45k or borrowing here selling this doing that and you end up having a fully fleshed studio now we are in an era where kids are not just rappers they gamers if I'm sitting at home and I want to know what will it cost me for a nice kitted room, an e-gaming room, what do you think are the bracket, the cost bracket cost-wise? So I think from a cost perspective, you need to just think logically. You don't need the green screen to start. You just need a nice background. You'll see most YouTubers do it in their bedroom. I think the biggest investments you need to make is in your camera and your okay. microphone and your lights. Okay. Um, and obviously you need some sort of way to get the game, whether that be on PC or console. So you, you need to invest in the console and, and then the computer itself, but you can get a decent gaming laptop for okay. about 25K. Yeah. You don't actually need a mic, now that I mentioned that, if you buy a really good gaming headset for anything between two and a half to four grand, those microphones, they got microphones on, right? and they're good quality. Is that what you use sometimes when you play? Yeah, when I play, I, I, in, most, okay. in most cases, I use my, my, okay. my embedded uh, Yeah, because my son asked me for one anyway. Yeah. But it's important to look when you look for one of those headsets to buy top of the range, because those mics are designed for, for broadcast quality, mm -hmm. for one of a better word. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to buy a super cheap headset because the mic won't be good. But if you shop in the region of between two and four grand, you can definitely get that. So I think between the console itself, which is obviously depending on which console, but if I'm honest, you could use the, the new Xbox Series S, which okay. is less than seven grand. It's phenomenal, does everything you need, and yeah. it's new gen. 
so Xbox you, Series X. X. So that's the baby, the new baby Xbox, but it does everything you need if you don't have a 4K TV, you're good to go. Okay. So I would go for that console and then a, a decent gaming laptop that has the processing power to edit. That's about 25. Dude, I'm sitting K. on I'm sitting on 70K if I'm calculating. I think it's less. I think if you went for, um, I'm now going super budget, but yeah. if you bought a really decent ring light, but you could get a cheap one as well. There's lots of ring lights on the market now. You need a decentish light, but say you got a ring light, which you is get for like thousand five hundred. Thousand five hundred. You're looking at seven grand for your console. Okay. All right. So it's possible you can create it. Taban. Yeah. What I struggle with, I, and I'm gonna talk about my experience. I grew in a TV game era before PlayStation, okay. and I know what Contra and Super Mario saved me from yeah. you know it, we don't give credit to the fact that these games are somehow some form of a rehabilitation program yeah and you run a movement you got kids that you bring into gaming do you think socially being a gamer or being entrenched and following or just being enrolled in this gaming industry it somehow can save or you know keep our kids away from trouble as some form of recreation Yes, um, absolutely. Why I say this is uh, because I'm going to speak from my point of view from right. the organization, right? Okay. So the organization that we, we started, um, Crowd Control, it started in late um, 2020, in the, mm -hmm. in the month of October. And the aim was just to be able to um, introduce um, esports and online gaming to kids within the different um, townships because we understand that uh, okay, not a lot of kids have access to you know consoles mm. and all of these you know fancy gadgets. Right. And I mean, for you as a black kid to go to your your parents and be like, "Mom, I want to play want to play be like, "For what?" Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it becomes a bit tricky. Exactly. So we decided that let's give them that kind of um, experience and and let them and let them see exactly what esports and gaming can be. But what type of support do you have to sustain it? Okay, cool. So. <laughs> People normally people don't 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 believe this, but yeah. they become shocked. Everything that's been done right now yeah. at the organization is fully self-funded. Everything from the cameras, you see that? The cameras that. So I do yeah. just because I mean I know so I've dealt. This is my biggest frustration locally. Is brands important. are always like, oh, we need to get more people gaming, and then you're like, cool. So here's these organizations like Tabangs. Let's get them consoles. Let's get them PCs, and they're like, oh, but. That doesn't make marketing sense because we won't sell consoles. And I get so mad because I'm like, you keep saying you want to build gaming. But so, what you actually so, want to do is just sell your product. So, so, so I do believe So it. I've got a business yeah. question to ask. Do you think that there's maybe a void, there's a missing link here. We don't have the right sales or the right representative in this industry to approach the brands correctly and demonstrate to them the ROIs. Uh, as a gamer, I wouldn't expect you to be a good seller. You, you know, as a, as a as somebody who, for, for instance, your gift is not to convince um, Sony in investing two million. There's someone who does that. Do you think that we're not organized to such an extent that we build the right people or team to actually grow this business um, to a point where you attract the right brands, to a point where you attract the right investment by putting a team of people in the business sector to come in and understand what the power of gaming is and by having that team collectively you approach as a collective the brands to come on board i think so because i think that the problem is right now gamers are trying to sell gaming and we're passionate so i can tell you how much i love video games <laughs> can i tell you roi no, no. i'll just tell you that i love playing it but i can also point out and i think it, it just pertains to that point the South African gamers who've made it in esports. Right. So the first one that I'll mention, uh, there's two FIFA players. So there's Tabo Young, Savage Malloy, he's won more than half a million. Tabo went to his first competition. He what? does not have a mm. PlayStation. He didn't own a PlayStation. He used to play on his friend's PlayStation and borrow it. He didn't own a copy no of ways. FIFA. Yeah. And then and he, he, won, he won 400,000 Rand that first tournament, yeah. he won it. He's now the first ever Red Bull sponsored esports athlete. He's one of the best FIFA players. His team member, Julio Bianchi, oh. first ever FIFA player from Africa to qualify for the FIFA E World Cup. He yeah. lived like he was a, an ex footballer, but Wait you see where he grew up. And so, all of these players, they didn't have the stuff. All of this stuff, yeah. Here's, and here's where I'm going, guys. Look at the Olympics in Tokyo and Japan, right? We have no spectators. We have no spectators in a pandemic. 
if you put together an e Olympic, for instance, I'm sure you'll have more audience engaging the platform. I think if you choose if you choose the right games for sure, you've seen it already where like League of Legends, which is this very popular game overseas, right. when they do their world champs, it's more viewers concurrently in the than the what Super Bowl. Viewers does this type of tournaments attract? Like give me an idea from a numbers perspective. So so there's two you've got to look at two different aspects. So overseas in Europe and China and America, yeah. millions of people watching all at the same time. Millions. They get more they said that they're they're getting more viewers concurrently watching than the NBA, than the Super Bowl. Locally we struggle with online because of the connectivity issues. Obviously yeah. dates is expensive here, people struggle to, to they watch. They say that one more time. <laughs> Date is expensive. Yeah. So people are struggling to watch. But if we do events and, and I mean I've seen this myself when there's a gaming expo or there's a, an event that people know about. Yeah. People come, there's so many people that come to watch, and I know about two years ago before the pandemic, Red Bull decided to do something called Red Bull Hit the Streets, specifically right. for fighting games. They closed the streets in Cape Town. The no. amount of people who were coming, they had to stop them coming in because there were so many people who love fighting games who were like, oh my gosh, I'm coming to watch this. And even people who had no idea about games, who were just walking down the street, were coming in going, this is so cool, I want to see more. So experience has given the account that there is interest. Oh, for sure. Mm. And we can produce a successful South African gaming expert. 100%. Look, so why are brands not coming on board? Oh. As they should, because I see the amount of investment that Monster and Red Bull makes overseas. It is insane. Monster is going big with uh, car racing, uh, the NASCAR, um, e-gaming. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me that one of the biggest, um, most funded event is the NASCAR e-gaming competition. And they put millions there. And you look at South Africa, maybe let's say FIFA. You said FIFA is the number one selling game, right? Mm -hmm. what, other, what type of numbers do you get for people who want to enter this competition locally? Sure. I mean, numbers in terms of, you now you're speaking from a perspective of people that come and, and, and yeah, participate. And participants. Yeah. Yeah. It will all depend on, one, the game that's being played, okay. you know, and two, the season in which the game is being played at, because sometimes you also need to take into account that uh, apart from gaming and South, people have their own lives apart from gaming. So sure. sometimes maybe, let's say, give or take in the period, I'm sure Sam will also help me out in this department. Uh, between now, what's it, in the month of August, we're right? getting into September, getting into, getting into September, yeah. we have more people participating because now we're moving towards the end of the year. Okay. Whereas earlier on in the year, between the months of January and June, a lot of people are busy, you know, businesses have opened up and, you know, the economy has really opened. So right, right. there's a lot of activity that's going on within business and people just detach a bit. So there's a religious following behind e-gaming. I mean, I can give you numbers just because I've obviously worked on these tournaments. We just right. had a Fortnite tournament two weeks ago. Now, keep in mind, this is all online because of the pandemic. So this is for only for people that have the connectivity and data to do it. Fortnite tournament. 1,680 yeah. people registered, kids registered to play one thousand in, in South Africa in South Africa for one tournament and they had to have internet connection a couple of months back so there's a mobile game called Free Fire so it's a game that you can play on your phone right. there was a tournament for Free Fire so Free Fire is teams of four so that's four people together and again this is all online so people with data 980 teams entered so times that by four that's how many people were going I want to compete never mind people who say I want to watch or I just love games so there are, there are players, we have them. So the community is there. It's the community is there. Now, tell me, what stimulates this entry? Is it the prize or is it the thrill of being around people like yourself? I think it's a mix of two. So I think obviously prize money is always fun, mm -hmm. but we see so much support for, for, I mean, there's people that will throw competitions. I've done it where I'm like, let's just have a fun competition. And the winner gets a pair of socks because I have nothing else to give you. And I'll still have lots of people passionate. We called it the stock invitational because I had no money and I had no brand support, so I said, Okay, so if Touch HD, if Touch HD put 50k for a FIFA South African World Cup, I'm going to say South African World Cup because we limited to South African players, are you going to tell me that you will hit more than 5,000 entries? I don't know, it would depend if it's online, we might struggle, but I have no doubt if we had it where people could actually get access because there's a lot of players that don't have data. 
without a doubt we would have them there so long as they knew this is another thing they know about it and I, you mentioned this right at the beginning right gaming and esports has traditionally been a, a white boys club sure i probably get into trouble with all the white boys for saying about okay no, 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 they don't not. talk to anyone else so there's lots of women there's lots of people of color who don't know mm-hmm. That these tournaments and these competitions are happening because there's a bubble that they're maybe not in. But so we I need think to break if we, that. if we break it, we yeah. would definitely have five thousand. We'd have five thousand players without a doubt coming in saying, you know what, we're in here. We want to compete. We we want to taste it there. Um, let's talk about cyber bullying. Oh, I I, I hate these guys. No, no, the no, trolls. The trolls. Yeah, I don't know what to call them, but um, how do we how do we prevent that from growing? Because you, 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 you get bullied by people that you've never met before and who are obviously, all they do is play the, this same particular game and the way they play, they're impatient with your level of play mm-hmm. and they just trash you like you, I mean, you know, for somebody who's like 10 years old to play, if you throw somebody online and they get whipped 10 nil, mm-hmm. it's demoralizing. Yeah. It, it is demoralizing. It's a hard one as well because I don't know how we fix it. I feel like when someone's behind a the screen, there's like a weird confidence that they get where they can behave like a terrible person like a real um, person yeah and i also think that like it isn't it is bad but right. it's not a constant thing um, right. i've been playing for years and, and obviously being a woman i get it a lot but it's not like it's not every single day you just remember the bad stuff mm-hmm. i have been working with so my favorite game to play is a game called rainbow six siege and i actually was really surprised because they have south african servers and the devs reached out to me and said we're sick and tired of, of hearing about the the racism and the bad behavior so can you help us because they actually sent a list of localized slang and slurs wow, and things and they said we want that, we want you to check admirable. this and yeah and ban them so that if someone mm. puts this in chat whether it be racist or sexist in another language that maybe obviously being based overseas we don't know about we can ban them mm. so i feel like that's a good start but it is difficult to root it out. So here's my next question to you. Um, if we have a network, for instance, I won't mention any name, um, that's behind, because I really think from this conversation, I pick up that data is the biggest challenge, but the community is there. So if we have a network behind us uh, to say, let's develop a league, is it possible to come up with our own PSL um, league? If we could get a, a network to support it, as a, and when you say support, not just put their name on it, they like actually give players the data they need. Yeah, like to here's your data. It. Here's here's you. You know, we're giving you guys eight months. Cause soccer is how long in South Africa? How long is the league running for? Nine months. I think they take a two months break or something. And I'm, I'm saying this because I can pick up a call to anyone. Celsi, MTN, Vodacom say we want to build a league is it possible will we have a following as equivalent to your super sport you know fans who tune and watch the game is this that community exist can you guarantee that we have that type of following in the country i think if we can give people access to the data yes without a doubt think about all your friends who play fifa yeah they are just my friends who if i ask them will tell me I mean, they know what I do for a living and they'll always say, I'm not a gamer, I don't play games. I go to their house, all seven of them are sitting behind their PlayStation playing FIFA. And I was like, those are games, you're a gamer. So there's so many people that play FIFA. I definitely think we have this giant community that can get behind it. The problem, and again, it always comes back to this, getting people access online, because this is the biggest problem, is that connectivity to play your games is what puts people on the back. I want to call someone while we're still talking, because I'm a doer. This guy can give us free data from a specific network. Is it okay if I make a call? I'm okay with it. Cause I'm okay with it as well. No, for real, because I, and I hope he's not in the meeting, please pick up my call. Um, Cause when I'm, as I'm listening to this, I know what gaming did to me. I, and I'm still like, you can see, I, I'm a, I played early. Um, Dr. Miller, Dr. Miller, I'm, so I'm in the middle of an interview, I'm in the middle of an interview with this tech giant lady called Sam Wright and Tabang, who's one of the big gamers. And there's a community of gamers out there, and I got you on speaker. There's a community of gamers out there who, from South Africa, have competed and won grand prizes. But one of the big challenges we have is data. And as I'm listening to them, if there's an existing community that can build a soccer league, if they had a network behind them, the ROIs are unfathomable. Is it a, is it a conversation that we can have with you? Because I generally think we're in a position to build an e-gaming community. And if we tie it in with some of our business plans that we've been discussing, 
we have a winning formula. I can bring him on board as well, but I, I want to come see. No, 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 no. I'm with Sam Wright and Taba. Yeah. So how about this? We're gonna set up a meeting and come see you. Yeah, of course. Actually. Is that cool? I mean, we're really, we're really changing the the data, the data atmosphere. Well, maybe change the Done. I'll hit you up. I'll text you the two yeah, times. Yeah. Let me speak to Sam and Taba and see when we can see you. But I think we got a winning. Okay, we'll probably set up for next Monday, bro. Okay, thank you. You're a champion, thank you. Thanks, See, I need to have contact for it. I want to be able to do that too. Yeah, Zinia. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think what, what you said earlier, you can't be a gamer and sell gaming. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? It's, it's like being a soccer player and try to negotiate your PSG transaction. Messi has a representative, and I think mm. with the gaming community, what you guys lack, from listening to you is the business acumen that can best support your pitch, that can best support the how to build this community. Because a lot of gamers are nerds. I'm surprised. You're so articulate. I'm like, okay, most gamers, most gamers are antisocial. These are guys who will draw people and call them their friends. Like they proper super nerds. So I think here yeah, we are up to something. Listening to this conversations because I'm passionate with gaming. I love like, in my spare time, people will be shocked. I think I, I, I play 20 hours of PlayStation a month. You know, it's not it's not a lot, but for what I do, it's a lot. I was just adding, it's a lot. That, that is a lot. Yeah. I know like people I, that are uh, consider themselves gamers who don't get 20 hours in, so you're doing well. So let's build a community, but let's also talk about the true part. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm winning one nil. I'm gonna let you continue and beat Taban for me. I, I mean, I don't play FIFA, I commentate, so... But, but yeah, I'm sure you can do it. Like, I, I'm on. gonna be very good at commentating my way through okay. this. Now, I want you to say, demonstrate, but before you do that demonstration, what are the bad side of this addiction? And I've just gotta get used to this controller. Mm -hmm. Unless so, he wants us so to... So you have PSG. Okay, yeah, yeah. PSG. I can make a suggestion. You yeah. can choose another game because I do have Dragon Ball Z. I do have Tekken. I'm ready for Dragon Ball Z. You ready let's for do this. Yeah, this, 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 this. I can't even say FIFA, so, but I don't want anyone to see how I play it because I'll have but more you no street grade. But, but, but I want to see your commentary I'll comment well. while we do it. No problem. Yeah, please. I want to hear your commentary. But tell me about the bad side of having this addiction. I do think that sometimes it can be dangerous, like you mentioned, purely from a, um, a I, I worry about people who, and I don't think it's a gaming addiction. I think when you have mental health issues, yeah. or I, I know, I'm gonna speak about a personal experience that I've spoken about before. My brother went through a very bad phase where he was in constant depression, and mm. he became obsessed with games to the point that he would walk out of his room at like nine in the morning, having stayed up the whole night. I was once like your brother. Yeah, he'd pretend to, hear pretend that. to yeah. drive to university and then he'd come home to play games when he knew everyone had left. He just never wanted to leave his room. And it was a really unhealthy addiction. But when you speak to him, he says he wasn't addicted to the game. He was sad and he was he was handling this depression and, and some of these issues that had affected him. So for him, gaming was it was easy for him to jump into the game and just forget the world existed. I do think that that is a problem that yeah. we don't nearly address enough is that a lot of people use gaming as a crutch. It's in this because you are you're escaping into another world. Also, for a lot of gamers, you know you're really good at the game, but maybe you're struggling at school or you're struggling in your job. That can be a big downside. So that is a problem. I mean, I think that there's a lot of issues that come with that, but I do think that the concept of gaming addiction isn't always it isn't always as bad as people say. I think that they need to look at the other issues because that's normally where the problems are. Yeah. It's not so much the game is is simply how you're dealing with it. Okay, okay. Now we're gonna get to see Sam Wright in action, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tabang, and I'm giving you this experience because Tabang has been bragging about his artistic skills and whipping any opponent. So, demonstrate to us, Sam Wright, you're in a tournament, and everybody out there is watching. What is you, who's Sam Wright in that element? Okay, so if I'm commentating, uh, we'll, we'll get ready once we're into the game. I'll okay. be able to jump in. We're just waiting to get a little battle going so we can have a two player jamming here. Got you. Okay, so let's tell everybody what game are we playing so that everybody's in tune and understand what this is. Can you go to the other side? Oh, where's. 
Dragon Ball Fighter Z. So this is a fighting game, but it's based off that really popular show, Dragon Ball. Okay. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, which everyone grew up playing, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you've never played it, if you've never watched it and played it. I've never and, played it. There you go. And you can, but you'll recognize. I mean, Kami ha Everyone yeah, knows nobody, that. Nobody, everybody knows that. Okay, just the nerds. Just the nerds. See, you guys are speaking Greek right now. So we're doing a little bit of character selection here. Okay. Um, so. I'm on the fence because I feel like I could really meme this I want and have, cameras to show have a little bit of, of a Johnny's giggle. Okay. Um, maybe we should we meme it? Meme it. So I want to have a little bit of fun and play the, the big flat blob just for a giggle. Okay. Just because you know it's good. So you got all the different characters, obviously. Um, some of them aren't unlocked, you have to buy them. This is like Street Fighter. It is like Street Fighter, yeah. I mean, fighting yeah. games are fighting games. Yeah, Street Fighter, it's like Street Fighter, okay. Yeah. And who's your favorite character? What did you choose? Tell me, tell me. Okay, so the characters that I chose um, for this particular battle, I chose um, Goku Black, Yamcha, as well as... Who's the last player? Oh, Trunks. Okay. Yeah, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, Trunks and Gohan. Why? Um, Sure, they so I feel like they're one of the most underrated superheroes in the entire like dragon. I like underdogs. I like underdogs. So they were so cute when they were kids. That's yeah, well, I like them just because I know like, them when they were kids. Well, we watched the TV yeah. show. I, like, I like the characters. I didn't pick for who played. I haven't played this game in like four years, but I was just like, oh, I like them when they were little kids in the show. Okay. But now they're more. Now they. Who's that fat character? This is. This me. is. We're just for a giggle. Oh. Ooh. 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 No. Dude! Oh no! Are you not going to be commenting on it? Okay, so I got very excited because I yeah. was doing some damage there. Okay. So you can see here that I've got quite a good attacking thing. I'm quite aggressive, that's my best style. But also, I mean, aggressive is another word for button bashing. Wow. Which you can see Tabang has now suddenly figured out what I'm doing, which is a little bit dangerous because once he knows I'm button bashing, he's going to be able to break all my combos. Which is exactly what's happening. So you can see that my health is gone, he's going to knock me out, I'm probably going to have to. Change out a little bit. He's got a really good block there because he's figured out. Oh, I missed that. Missed that. Missed that. Missed that. that would have been a really good finish for him. Yeah. But he's now down me, so I'm gonna swap out. I had a good strong start, but unfortunately at the end there. So he figured you out early. Oh, you can even change characters now. So bit. yeah. Once once one of your characters are down, so now I'm freezer. Um. So a little bit more space for me to play to try and stop mm. him from getting me. But you can see tonight's actually doing really well. And now I'm out. I'm Gohan. Sabang's gonna annihilate me, and you can see this. He's just got my number. Once I started the, the button bashing, right, right. we were done. He's got the blocks down. So this is the thing, you can be super aggressive. Here's the big after thing. We're about to go down half. I missed it again for the second time. So it's all about it's all about figuring out which pace you want to play at. So when you're doing this, and one of the things I talk about when I commentate is mm -hmm. certain players are very, very good at being aggressive. Okay. But if you're aggressive, you've got to be ready to defend yeah. well. Well done on that. You seem to have uh, some way of attacking every time when uh, Sam has figured out the superpowers. Every time she throws some superpowers, you come back. Yeah, How are you intercepted? Because okay, so sorry about that. With fighting games, one thing that every, everybody must understand is that um, here you need to be very all of your attacks. You have to time them, so you can just you can't just like go rushing. So you see what Sam is doing now. Yeah. It seems like she's figured out what I'm trying to do. So every time when I'm trying to change a player, she just do a dash, and then unfortunately a dash I can't even block. Not Sam. Male, female play. There's no um, leniency here. GBB doesn't apply. You can't say, oh, my sim is a lady, I'm going be soft. No, no, no. no. Yeah, you no. Just, no. yeah, we're all equal. That's why I like video games, because whether you're a girl, oh, no, 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 no. Ah! Oh. Is, oh, oh, nice. Um, whether you're a girl or a guy, whether, I mean, and this is the thing, with no matter who you are, no matter your age, you're all equal in game, right? Right, right. So no one can say, hey, but be, be kind to me, I'm a lady. No, 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 no. that doesn't apply in the world of video games. Sometimes, it, I've played in multiplayer where I've seen a girl say, oh, but just be nice, I'm a girl. And I get a bit annoyed because I'm like, but I'm a girl too, and we're trying our best to show that we're on equal footing. 
So how do you mobilize ladies to get into gaming? I think you've got to create a safe environment for for, for girls where okay. they don't feel because I do think women get it harder. So like for example, even in my job, right. I can be a good commentator, but if I'm not, if I make one mistake, no one lets me. Oh, we are less forgiving towards well, our sisters. Yeah. You're actually right. You know, when I listen to soccer, and I, you know, you know, Supersport does it very well. There are a lot of female commentators, right? We always look for. Look how close it was, though. It was look so oh, close. See, this is what gaming does. Uh, we are having three conversations. <laughs> this is what gaming does. We are having three conversations. Yeah, we'll concentrate now. We were no, just right at no, the end go of the Who won? Who won? So it's a one one. But this is really tight. Dude, it's women's month. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, Taba. I'd have been upset if you let me win, though, because then I would have. I, w I was waiting because I was like, if he backs off now, yeah, I was like, do I back off? Do I do it? And do I was like, do don't do that, I'll be upset. From your experience, the number one game as South Africans, give me your top three games in SA. So, definitely FIFA, without a doubt. Okay. I think a close second is either Street Fighter or Tekken. I'm on the fence as to whether it's Tekken or Street Fighter, but it'll defi it's definitely one of those two. Okay. And I do think that the third most popular game is probably a Fortnite. Um, I say that though I don't have the numbers. Mobile games are super popular, so that's yeah. one thing. And, and I think that I've mobile games for me are far more popular than we realize. Right. Um, okay. Before anything else, Tavan. Yes. I'm at home. I might not be from Eastern, but I want to join this movement. Mm -hmm. Tell me how. Give me the roadmap. Okay, cool. So the roadmap to this um, movement is simply easy. Number one, people can just follow us across our social media platforms, which okay. is Facebook, Instagram. Say that slow, please. So, <laughs> sorry. I want the letters on the screen to appear. All right, yeah. So for people who want to be part of this entire entire movement right. and, and understand what we're really all about, right. they can follow us on our social media platforms. That's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Crowd Control GCE. Crowd Control GCE. Okay. Yeah. GCE is just it's then short for Gaming Chill Experience. Gaming Chill Experience. Yes. Because you're doing a FIFA tournament. I'm sure I saw something about this on Twitter today. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so, so I'm gonna follow you. Um, crowd. It's Crowd Control. So C R O G C E. Yeah. G C. Fantastic. Um, Sam. Moving forward, we about to meet with. A network which I won't disclose to try and make data accessible. What's the future? Do we have a community that we can communicate to right now and say, given access to data, what is it that you will envisage can happen? I do think that there is a community we need to talk to, and I think that if we, if, t if people like Taban can speak to their community as well, and we can expand it out. And I also think speaking to people that maybe not just getting gamers to spread the message, but people that maybe we don't consider gamers but have big audiences and big communities because mm -hmm. there's gamers within them. I definitely think we can get the message out mm -hmm. and find a way to bring everyone and, and connect everyone together. And, uh, and 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 I'm gonna touch on this. The the, the black community. Um, is, is 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 minuscule in the ecos in, in, in the entire ecosystem of gaming. Yeah. How do we mobilize the black community to be part of this, you know, industry? So, one thing that I really love um, within the black community is that the kids are very much um, receptive. Right. Whenever they, 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 they see these consoles, so they just go bananas. So, having to use them as a vehicle mm -hmm. to be able to champion you know gaming on our behalf will bring us closer and closer and be able to build an even much more stronger gaming community inside Africa. So you're saying that the, the love and the passion is all there. Cost is also one of the biggest hindrances but we can integrate. I really think as, as a society, as a country we have a responsibility to also address the racial imperatives we have in, in our society through gaming. I think we can deal with a lot of these racial barriers we've created. I see sports has united us over years and years. I mean, look at the World Cup, when I go play golf, you know, it's it's like, it's, it's colorless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't you think we should use the power of gaming as well to bring all different ethnic groups together and possibly address some of the challenges that we will not be able to address on a cup of tea? 
I definitely think so. And I do think that everyone playing together will also, and again, it's that whole thing of like, I mean, I hate saying it, but it is the truth where we're all equal in game. It'll also change a lot of people's perceptions, make them a little bit more able to, to communicate and talk. And I find for me personally, gaming has always been a way where we can have those serious conversations that are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I can, you know, we, we can talk about all. land during a gaming expo. You know what I'm saying? We can exactly. talk about all and these. those conversations. We're in the same place. We're sharing the same passions. With I feel like we're the same. We're playing the same game. So having that conversation mm -hmm. is. I don't want to say easier, it's a tough conversation, but you're more open to having it mm -hmm. as, in, as opposed to shouting at each other on, on social media, which you see a lot. Yeah. So, so in closing, I'm going to bank on a network of gamers you have access to. I'm going to bank on the network of all you know, the brands and whoever it is throughout your years and years of being in this field. To bring the two together, you go and partner with a network and build a community of gamers who will not just come to game but deal with the social ills we have in society. I think this is one of the most powerful platforms for people to open up yeah. and you know have a, have have some kind of um, breaking of this barriers that we created that we won't be able to break in wardrobes, that we're not able to break in churches and other you know activities. Yeah. What, what do you think? I think there has to be, where do we go from here? I definitely agree. And I think that it is, if we can bring everyone together, and like you said, bringing in that support where the things that we don't necessarily, as gamers, we, we, the conversations we can't have, right. I think it can make all the difference. Like, I've enjoyed talking to you guys, not looking into my eyes over the past 49 minutes, whatever. It's, it's interesting just because- I'm so focused you know, on this. You know, no, 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 which is, which is interesting. <laughs> guys, I didn't know how we were gonna execute this conversation while you play. But it's possible to have a conversation and still be, you know, indulged in your game. But moving forward, we've, we've established a lot here. We've got a meeting next week with a network. Let's put something together. It's festive season. Everybody has been claustrophobic with this pandemic. So let's just go out there and do something exciting. Yeah? I'm yeah. excited for that. I got you on board. You can both pause. Come on, give it, come on. Come. I, I got you guys on board, right? right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Carry on with murdering each other. We're so close. That doesn't sound right. But ladies and gentlemen, that's what happens. I think we have a responsibility, um, especially with dealing with our, our kids. I'm raising two boys who are probably spending more than four or five hours in front of a screen. I don't know who they're playing with. And I'm sure there are other kids out there who can be saved from being in the street, doing the wrong things. If we make data accessible, if we make some of these gadgets accessible, and we're gonna try and make it happen. We have a responsibility. Sam Wright has a connect. Tabang has all these players. We're gonna put it all together. Soon you will be hearing of this day, this great expo, and maybe we need to add a different flag. Let's have like a Shisanyama at this gaming expo. I want that. I've always said for esports to grow in South Africa, we need to start actually we need to make them South African. We got to stop copying what we're yeah, seeing overseas. Let's get a little yeah. bit of our flag apart, apart, apart from you know not being able to afford gadgets, but the reason why it's still a white-dominated um, industry is because you don't have meat at these expos. I agree. Start serving meat, you want to see a whole lot of people like me <laughs> coming out. So our next expo, ladies and gentlemen, God's willing, we're going to be inviting you to come and take part in this great experience and possibly get to see how best we can grow our e-gaming community. This has been an amazing conversation. Um, I never thought it, it, you know, it'll work because you have to be so focused in playing and talking at the same time. But I truly had fun. Taban, thank you for joining me on this great episode of In Touch. No, no. Sam, thank I look you. forward to making magic with you and we're gonna make this happen. Festive season, I don't know the time and date, but we have a plan. All right? So log on to touchhd.co.za for more details or follow us on Insta. Um, on uh, Twitter, Touch HD Online. You didn't give out your social handles. You can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch. It's Tech Girl ZA. Uh, you can find me on uh, on our social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Crowd Control, GCE. That's right. From your boy Touch, ladies and gentlemen, it's been real. <laughs>